So uh, today we'll talk about um, echo continuous functions. Uh, we can talk about also uh, totally bounded. So, uh, uh, yeah, why are we talking about record continuity? So I uh, recall uh, Hein Borel It said that um, a set uh, K in a ren is a uh, compact if and only if um, K is uh, closed and bounded. Closed and bounded. Um, but yeah, so this semester we, we try to see, um, we, uh, we want to find uh, an analog of this theorem. Um, for um, for the for the function space um, continuous functions uh, where k is uh, compact in the Rn sense. Um, so let's see, is closed and bounded enough? Meaning, um, suppose uh, a family of functions F um, inside uh, C0K is uh, closed and bounded in the supernorm Uh, that means, um, let me write in parenthesis, um, uh, Fn going to F implies F is in the family, and uh, bounded means that, um, you know, uh, G, um, so, how do you say it? Uh, there exists uh, M such that uh, for all G in the family, uh, the supernorm is less than M. Okay, that's what bounding means. I'll try to recall why it was for a uh, Euclidean space. It's the uh, the uh, no, the same, but you you replace everything by the supernorm. Okay, so suppose the family of functions is closed and bounded. Um, is it? Um, is it uh, compact too? Um, by compact, we mean, um, you know, for every um, for every uh, sequence in the uh, in the family, there exists a convergent subsequence. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. What is a family? Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, good. Um, yeah, so, so C0K is a space of continuous functions. And uh, you will see a family in a second. So, Suppose a family of functions 
um, a subset of uh, we mean a subset. Uh, of functions um, is closed and bounded, is it compact as well? So the answer is no, and here's the example. Um, let, uh, let F be the family of functions uh, defined as follows. So it was, uh, what was it? Uh, zero and X and then what is it one uh, for all n bigger than one so this family this um, you know this um, it's a collection so if you like, it's a, by family we mean collection. Um, so these are all the functions that are zero. Uh, then what do they do? They go up, they hit one over n, and then they stay minus one. Um, so you have things like this. Okay, let me do it. So it goes higher and higher. I know it goes like this. All right. Um, okay. Will it be one instead of minus one? Okay, so let me see. I have my notes. No. Did I write? What? So will it be one instead of minus one? Oh, oh, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Of course. Yeah, this is one. Good. Yeah, so this was in your practice problem. Uh, what was the number? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, this was a practice problem question. So hopefully some of you have seen it. And uh, what you prove there uh, and uh, what you show there is that, uh, you know, I mean, it's clear, right, that Fn goes pointwise to um, uh, the step function, so uh, 0, 1. So it goes like this. Then he jumps. So that's okay. Uh, which is discontinuous. So, uh, so F, so the family F, so F, um, so, so how do you say it? So the sequence um, Fn has uh, no uh, convergent uh, subsequence. Um, but is it closed? I'm not sure if it's closed. I should probably add it. Okay. Um, what did I want to say? Right, right, right. Yeah, it is closed. Yes. Anyway, so so yeah, so that means that uh, so F 
is not compact. Um, great. And uh, you can see that is, um, uh, but it is closed and bounded. Uh, bounded because uh, the soup norm of Fn is less than one for all n, and uh, closed because it's a discrete set. So it's closed within itself, so closed in subspace. But uh, yeah, it's not compact. So what's next? Um, so yeah, oh, let me make a cool remark. So uh, uh, it's actually very general. So what is it? Oh no, now, now I remember. Ah, this is all silliness. No, no, no. Um, God damn it. Okay, yeah, so we take this sequence. Um, yes, yes, now I remember. So you take that sequence. So that's the sequence. Okay, that's fine. And then, um, so, so scratch this. I made a mistake. Because I, yeah, so forget this. Let me uh, say exactly. Okay, so this was in your practice program. What did you do? You showed that uh, you showed that this sequence has no convergent subsequence, and then uh, part three was uh, uh, let f be the uh, the unit ball, right? So you took all continuous functions um, whose um, supernorm was less than one. Okay, so this is the unit ball in uh, in C zero minus one. Okay, and in that problem, uh, there you showed that uh, you you can show that uh, F is uh, closed, meaning. Uh, if fn goes to f uniformly, uh, then the supernorm of f is less than one, and f is continuous and uh, is bounded. Uh, as you can see from here. Okay. Uh, yet. Um, Uh, Fn is a sequence within this uh, family because um, Fn uh, is less than one. It's actually equal to one. It's supernormal. Um, has no uh, convergent uh, subsequence. Okay. with everyone? Okay, so closed and bounded is not enough. Uh, in Euclidean space, closed and bounded is enough uh, to give you compact. Uh, but here it's not. So, good. So we have to introduce a uh, new concept. Okay. Okay, so a definition. Uh, a family of functions uh, uh, is called uh, echo pointwise. It's called pointwise. Uh, echo continuous. At x naught, 
uh, f. So this is the same as continuity, but there's uh, one subtle difference. So there exists delta x naught epsilon, uh, such that um, note um, such that for all n bigger than one. So note the for all comes after there exists. So delta does not depend on n. But it depends on x not an epsilon. Okay. So that's pointwise echo continuous. And in the book they just call it echo continuous. But uh, we'll see um yeah, so in the book they call it point ways. And then um so that's point ways. And then uniformly echo continuous. Um if um, for all epsilon <clears throat> uh, there exists a global delta. Uh, such that for all n bigger than one, um, x minus y less than delta global implies um, um, less than epsilon for the uh, for the entire family. I shouldn't write n. I should say, um, I should not write this. I should say for all f in the family. The, the, the family might be uncountable. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, let me know. I mean, we have time. You can stop me. So let's do some examples to get a grapple of this. Okay. So I want to do first an uncountable example just to remove the notion that it has to be a sequence. So let um, f uh, be all the functions in C0 um, with the following property. Uh, their modulus is controlled by a global constant. Um, and then you have a global alpha. So you have a global alpha and global constant. Okay. Um, we claim that this is echo continuous. I uh, want to show f. So these are called holder functions with a uniform constant. I want to show that f is um, uniformly echo continuous. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. So, uh, yeah, so please remember fix your epsilon. Um, so let's reverse engineer. Actually, I should reverse engineer because many of you did it in the proofs and it's bad. So, how do I? Let me call it draft work to make sure that people don't do this. Okay, so we want, uh, want to show uh, f of x minus f of y. Uh, is less than epsilon, but we have this bound. Um, so, so yeah, we want to find uh, we want to find delta global. How can we find delta? Um, well, let's see. Can I guess it? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to reverse engineer from here. Like I know the answer. Uh, okay, but we know, right, but we know um, x minus y is less than delta global. Right, so let me start from there. 
Um, so we have CX. Uh, let me take powers. So we have this and then multiply by the constant. Right, good. So we want, um, so we want, uh, we want epsilon to equal C delta alpha, because then we get, uh, we get, uh, we get the statement. OK. So now let's solve for delta. So you get delta is equal to epsilon one over. Um, one over C, uh, one over alpha. So that's your delta. So now back to the original proof. Um, yeah, so we fix epsilon. Uh, then for uh, uh, delta equal to uh, to this guy, uh, we get x minus y less than delta implies um, the statement. Okay with everyone? Yes? No? Don't care? Care? Yeah, I should ask for now. Uh, is that okay with everyone? Yes. And you can just like it. Um, okay, so so um so F is um um, uniformly uh, X continuous. Okay. So, all right. Um, okay, good. I have seven people. That's good. Uh, let's do another example. Um, Uh, let F uh, be the family uh, sine NX N. Uh, again, we claim that this is a uh, uniformly echo continuous. I uh, want to show F uh, is uniformly echo continuous. I think it's easy um, by MVT. Um, what do we have? We have f of n x minus f of n y is equal to f prime of uh, some psi between x and y in an interval. Um, if you like the min, the max. Um, Right, but uh, we have the derivative here. The derivative is, um, if you do it, it's very easy. You just get cosine and the n cancel out. But cosine is less than one, so you're done. You, um, you, got, a, you got a modulus that does not depend on n. So uh, modulus independent of n. So that's really how you get echo continuity. Um, right, so should I say anything? Uh, yeah, so then, you know, fix epsilon and just take, uh, just take uh, the same. Just take uh, delta to be epsilon. And that will give you the, the proof. Okay, so that's an example. Uh, yeah, let me do 
let me say why the original example is not equicontinuous. Just to finish the circle here. Um, I want to show that Fn, uh, it was zero and x one. So let's say why it's not decker continuous, so you don't have uh, compactness. So one over n, one. Okay. I uh, want to show that this guy is not uh, is not uh, point-wise echo continuous, and no, so not even uh, uniform. Um, how do we do this? So let me give you two uh, ways to show that you don't have echo continuity. Um, actually, I'll just do it through it, the example. So. Um, so we would suffice to fail at uh, at one point. So let uh, x not to be zero, and <clears throat> the contrapositive is, you know, for every n, um, you know, you can find um, a sequence a n uh, going to x not uh, such that you know, um, f of n, a n minus the um, the limit point is lower bounded by some epsilon. Okay, so let's do the, so, um, I, right, so in our case, um, this is just, uh, um, you know, you have a n x minus uh, zero. Um, sorry, um, n times a n. So that's what you have in our case. So we just need to pick a n to make this be uh, not going to zero. So just let uh, uh, let uh, a n just be one over n. Uh, then, um, you know, fn a n minus fn zero is equal to one. So let this be epsilon naught. Okay. So is uniform echo continuous means uh, all functions in the family are uniformly continuous? Yes, that is also an implication. Uh, okay, that's a beautiful segue. So let me give you, uh, yeah, let me give you an example. So okay, so I, I, I'm hoping this is clear. So, so f equal to that family, uh, you know, is not uh, echo continuous. Uh, yes. Okay. So now let me give you an example, um, just to to draw. I have time. I have some time. Um, example of uh, a family uh, which is pointwise it continues but not uniform. Um, okay, so let um, this will come back. So what was the function? Yeah. So um, let the, this family be. Um, x square. Um, so here we could have put any function, just to come back to the comment by the student, uh, any function that is not uniformly continuous. Yeah. Uh, then we claim that um, this family is, uh, is pointwise, x continuous, uh, but not uh, uh, uniformly and uniformly echo continuous. Um, so, and that's because we we added a guy which is not um, uniformly continuous. So 
their family would definitely not even be um, echo continuous uniform. OK, so let's see. Let's do this example. Uh, let's do point wise first. Uh, fix X naught. Uh, so what was my proof? Uh, yeah, so you fix X naught. You have two cases. Um, case one, you know, um, X naught is less than N. Then you have, um, uh, what did I write? Yeah, you just get the usual um, guy. So X squared minus X naught squared. And, uh, you know, this guy is continuous. Just use MBT. So uh, 2 Psi X minus X naught. So this is MBT. And then, um, right, so just take the bound. What was my bound? Yeah. X naught plus 1. Long story short, you have a constant which depends on X naught. Uh, and it's independent of N. So this constant independent of N. So if you fix epsilon, uh, just take, uh, take delta uh, to be uh, to to be just this constant c x naught um, sorry to be epsilon over that constant. Is that okay? Um, so you are pointwise echo continuous, but you're not uniformly. So again, I want to give you a way to. Uh, so now we show that it's not, uh, next we show F is not uh, uniformly echo continuous. Okay, uh, it's the same, again, going back to the student's comment, the proof is similar. So to show that you don't have uniform continuity, what did you do? Um, you found some epsilon, uh, so, you found uh, uh, so want to find equivalent uh, sequences a and b n that just means a n minus b n goes to zero um, such that f n a n uh, minus um, f n uh, sorry I have to do this way. Uh, Fn Bn minus Fn An is bigger than zero for all m. So it's really it's exactly the same. The only difference is for each member of the family, uh, you match the um, the sequence. Uh, in our case, uh, we take. Uh, do we take? Uh, we take An to be um, N, and we take uh, BN to be, um, is that what I want? Yeah, okay, no, I want this, this notation. Yeah, and then uh, we take AN to be N minus one over N, okay? All right, so this is equivalent. You can check, um, what do I wanna say? Yeah, BN minus AN is one over N. Uh, but uh, we have Fn, Bn minus Fn, um, An. So these are both less than n. So you get, um, you know, Bn squared minus An squared. And if you do the computation, you just get uh, something like this. 2 minus 1 over n squared, um, which is bigger than 1. And so you call this epsilon naught. Okay? So indeed, uh, F uh, is not uniformly echo continuous. 
Okay. Okay, so hopefully now, but I should draw some pictures. Um, this is too abstract. Um, let me draw it besides the holder example. Just to see what, what do we mean by, so let me draw it on the side. Um, so by, um, what do we mean by uniform and con continuity? We mean, um, how do you say it? So let me fix X naught. And then let me fix a ball around it. So let me do this carefully. So I have one guy. Actually, I would take the, let me take the square root functions. Yeah. So I will take shifts. Yes. So, um, so if you draw a, um, if you draw, so what it says is that you can take the same tubular neighborhood, we're too close, um, you can take the same tubular neighborhood same size. Um, around them. For this delta ball. So let me put it here. Okay. So same delta. Um, you can have the same um, same epsilon neighborhood. Um, now, going back to the other example, let me show you why this picture fails. So, um, yeah, so let me draw it. Is it? Yeah, this guy. So this guy is pointwise echo continuous, but not uniformly. And uh, let's draw some pictures. So it says that you go up to x squared, then your constant, then uh, what is it? Yeah, you go up, same function, and then you start later. Okay, let me draw the slope bigger. So you go like this. Go like this. Okay. Now um, it's true that if you fix x naught, um, you know you um, if you fix x naught, you get the uh, the same um, tubular neighborhood. But uh, the thing is, when you have you know x one here and x two here. Um, you need different delta to to uh, to get the same neighborhood. So, for example, here you need it to be a lot smaller, delta prime, if you want to get the same um, delta neighborhood. I know this is a bit abstract, but um, hopefully you can. Um, um, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so here x squared grows fast. Yeah, so delta needs to be a lot smaller than delta prime. So try, try to play with these pictures and uh, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Now, let me say that uh, in our case, this will be mostly irrelevant. So um, let's prove the following 
of time. So let's prove the following. Um, if uh, f is inside a family of functions where, uh, where the underlying set is, uh, is compact, Uh, and um, this family is pointwise echo continuous. Then um, F pointwise echo continuous, then F is in fact uniformly uh, echo continuous. So in other words, you can uh, in our case, yeah, you can, uh, when the underlying set is compact, uh, you can ignore their distinction. Um, okay, so what was my proof? Good. So we've done this. Uh, uh, the proof is uh, very similar to um, uh, the proof is um, uh, very close to that of the um, Hein Cantor theorem. Um, so let me remind you. Uh, Uh, so, in the Hein Cantor theorem says that, uh, you know, if, um, if F uh, is continuous, uh, then F is uh, uniformly echo continuous, uh, uniformly continuous. That was the Hein Cantor theorem, if you remember. So the proof is similar, so let's go over it uh, once again. Um, so suppose uh, by way of contradiction, um, you know, suppose that uh, F uh, is not, is not um, uniformly echo continuous. What does that mean? Well, it means that, um, how do you say it? Uh, there exists epsilon naught so that for all n and um, equivalent sequences, um, a n, uh, b n. Uh, such that so there exist um, yeah equivalent sequences and and sequence um, uh, f n in f uh, so that uh, even though a n b n goes to zero yet. Uh, these guys are um, not going to zero. Okay. No questions. Either this is too easy or too hard. All right. Um, fine. So this is the situation. So we will try to get a contradiction. Uh, so by compactness of K, um, uh, A N goes to A, 
in Bn goes to B. Um, by equivalence, by equivalence, um, A uh, is equal to B. All right. Okay, so let's try to do a, a limiting argument. Um, I mean, yeah, there exists a um, subsequence. I also have to match the. Ah, uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, okay, fine. So that's the situation. Um, what do I want to say? Yeah, anyhow. Okay, but uh, we have continuity. So uh, uh, fix uh, epsilon not uh, epsilon equal to epsilon not over two. Uh, then. Uh, there exists a delta, which is um, which depends on a and epsilon, but does not depend on n. Um, so there exists such an epsilon, such a delta, so that um, what do you have when a and k minus, um, what do you say, uh, is less than delta, uh, you get uh, F and K, A and K, is less than epsilon, right? Then the, this delta is global um, in N, but not in A. Okay. So let's get a contradiction now. Actually, I need it to be three. So let's get contradiction. Um, so you have F and K. Let me start from the left. Epsilon naught is less than these two guys. Right? Uh, this is by star. Uh, then we do the usual, um, you know, um, triangle, add and subtract. F and K A, but A is equal to B. So actually, yeah, I don't need to do over three. Um, over two is fine. Um, okay, so we have this. And then, uh, yeah, so let me fix it again. Oh yeah, two was fine. Um, and then, yeah, use, um, use the continuity. So uh, take uh, NK large enough. So that um, A and K minus A is less than delta, and uh, B and K um, minus A is also less than delta. So we get epsilon not over two. Oh, I see why I did. Okay, good. I needed to get my. Um, no, I was fine. In fact, let me make it four. So yeah, you get this guy and epsilon over four. So you get epsilon naught over two. So all together you get epsilon naught is less than epsilon over two. So you get um, uh, you get one less than a half. So 
So yeah, and now I take the break. Now we take break. If you have any questions, it doesn't have to be uh, for the course. Just put them in the chat and I will, uh, I will answer.
Oh yes, I have to give you this result. Okay. Yes. So yeah, one more thing about the uh, <clears throat> make a continuous. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> if um, proposition, so you will uh, you will need this for one of the homeworks. Um, if uh, if um, f is uh, echo continuous, so <clears throat> when the underlying set is compact. <clears throat> uh, we always mean echo uh, uniformly by the previous theorem. Um, and, um, and K is compact. <clears throat> okay, then, then um, the following function. <clears throat> Um, f of x. Let me write x naught because it will confuse me. Um, then this guy, this maximum function. So here we're not taking <clears throat> supremum over x. We're taking it over the family. Uh, is continuous. So you will need this for one of the homeworks, <clears throat> and I'm gonna do it here because uh, uh, it's a very tricky one. <clears throat> And uh, so, okay. so number. Okay. So what do we want to show? We want to show that uh, uh, fix epsilon positive. There exists uh, delta x not epsilon um, such that <clears throat> x minus x not less than this delta implies, um, you know, that the maximum, this maximum function is uh, less than epsilon. Okay, so that's the. Um, yeah, we want to prove this function is uh, continuous. OK, so let's start. Um, <clears throat> by the epsilon definition of soup, so we're going back to week uh, one and two of uh, soup, <clears throat> there exists a function f epsilon in the family um, so yeah there is just a yeah a function in the family um, such that you know you have your um, what do you call it mx naught is less or equal than epsilon naught over two um, plus f epsilon so why I like this? Um, X naught. Okay. So try to remember what the epsilon definition was. 
So this is the soup, right? So we have soup. Uh, if you like F in the family, um, F of X naught. Right, so that's the, what we get from there. And then one more thing. So that's one and two. Um, by echo, con by, yeah, by echo continuity, by uniform. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing, um, by echo continuity, there exists the delta only depending on epsilon because the cell is compact. Um, such that X minus Y <clears throat> less than delta implies um, uh, that this guy is less than epsilon over two for all the members of the family of this collection. Okay. So let's put them together. <clears throat> so together. <clears throat> Mx naught minus Mx. So we want to show that this guy is less than epsilon. <clears throat> okay. Um, Right. Okay, so one step at a time. First, we get our uh, um, question. Do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the set is compact. Uh, minus supremum uh, of um, f of x, f in the family. Okay. Okay. What did I do next? I added and subtracted. Anyhow. Okay, so you got that. Um, now I recall. Um, that if you have uh, you have minus soup of something of a set uh, is equal to uh, inf um, uh, how do you say it is equal to inf of minus a. So we keep the epsilon outside, but we bring in ga this guy inside. So we. Uh, we bring this guy inside. Uh, so you have plus inf um, f um, bad notation. Okay, I made a mistake. Fine. Let me do this again. Sorry, I apologize. So uh, you have this. Then you use that uh, minus soup of A is equal to inf of minus A. Um, I skipped the step. I should have done it more slowly. Um, so again, again, we want to show that this is less than epsilon. Fine. So we bring in the minus and it becomes inf. Okay. Let me follow my proof instead of skipping steps. Um, okay, then you. Um, okay, then um, you add and subtract the limit point. So okay. So why did I do this? This guy will be, be controlled by uh, epsilon definition. And this guy will be controlled by uh, echo continuity. So, <clears throat> okay. um, so 
fine. So yeah, we have <clears throat> inf over the family. Uh, by echo continuity, this is less than uh, <clears throat> less than epsilon over two, um, because uh, x naught minus x is less than delta. And uh, this guy, we already controlled it. Um, so, um, you know, yeah, here you use the epsilon definition. Okay, I think that's it, yeah. And then you get epsilon. Okay, so uh, feel free to just reference the result. So we showed that uh, m of x naught minus m of x is less than epsilon. And by swapping the, the rows of um, x and the x naught, uh, we get um, uh, we get the double bound. <clears throat> okay, is that okay? I should write it more carefully in the notes. Um, okay, so I think that's it for echo continuity. Yeah. So let's slowly start what we're going after. Um, the main theorem of this week, of course, is uh, the uh, generalization of uh, hein borel for continuous functions uh, is the generalization. of uh, Hein Borel. Um, for uh, continuous functions uh, where K is compact. So it's called Arzella Scully. And uh, we will do some of the proof today and uh, Thursday. It's a very long proof. But a very powerful theorem. It shows up in many places, um, from physics to um, statistics. Okay, so um, a family. A family. Um, F. In C zero K. Uh, with um, K compact. Is um, is compact in the supernorm sense um, if and only if um, f is a closed bounded and uh, you need one more echo continuous. Here, echo continuous, uh, we mean uh, uniformly because the set is compact, so they're equivalent, pointwise and uh, uniformly. Oh, let's see. We have half an hour. So I'll do the easy direction. Then I have to talk about totally bounded, and then next Thursday we finish up. So this is the theorem. Let's do, um, what is it called, sufficient? Um, let's show, um, assume, um, yeah, assume F is uh, compact. Okay. Right, uh, what shall I say? So uh, the proof for uh, closed and bounded is the same. The 
proof that uh, <clears throat> F is uh, closed and bounded is identical. Uh, is the same as in Hein Borel. Okay. So we have to, so we're just going to focus on um, echo continuous. So I want to show F is a, F is a echo continuous. <clears throat> yeah, the proof will be uh, almost the same as um, what we did 10 minutes ago. Um, suppose otherwise, so by way of contradiction. Um, you know, um, suppose uh, F is not echo continuous. OK, that means, uh, what does that mean? It means there exists an epsilon naught and um, sequences a n, b n, f n, uh, such that even though these guys are equivalent, uh, yet, um, the limiting, uh, the images are not equivalent. Okay with everyone. So yeah, the proof is very similar. Let's see what the main difference is. Uh, since, uh, yeah, let's do everything again. So by compactness, Um, of now of K, you get that um, A N goes to A, B N goes to B uh, by equivalence by equivalence um, A is B and finally by compactness of the family, the family, um, there exists a uh, subsequence F and K going uh, uniformly to F in the uh, in the family. Okay. Right. So we will put this uh, together. Uh, so how do we do this? Yes, okay. okay. So I don't have continuity, echo continuity. So let me go back. Let's see. Um, so somewhere we used continue. Uh, Somewhere we used um, um, somewhere we used what is it? Where did I say it? Oh, I said it here. Yes, let me add it here, and then so this is one, two, <clears throat> and three. That was a uh, by continuity. Uh, Right, so now we don't have a continuity, but we have uh, we have uniform convergence to a continuous function. Okay, so let's put them together. Um, it's an epsilon over three argument. So as usual, fix epsilon. 
And let's do all of them at once. So um, there exist uh, NK large enough. Just N large enough. So that for all NK bigger than N, um, you know, you have soup over X and K, F and KX minus F of X is less than uh, epsilon over three. So that's step one. Step two, uh, this guy F is continuous. Um, F is continuous. F is in fact uniformly continuous. Um, why? Uh, because uh, because K is compact, and so we apply Hein Cantor. All right. Uh, that tells you what? It tells you um, you know. Um, there exists delta so that a and k minus a being less than delta implies um, f of um, a and k minus f of a yeah, is less than uh, epsilon over 3. And I think that's it. Yes, so now punchline. So all together. Um, you know, as usual, take uh, take epsilon to be epsilon out over two. So we have by by star. Let me put star again. So this is star. So this is by star. Uh, we have that lower bound. Then we do a triangle. This will be a very big one. So let me start from here. Um, so F and K, A and K minus F of A and K plus f of a and k minus f of a. Um, well, I need many. Then f of a minus f of b and k plus um, f of uh, b and k minus f of n k b and k. Okay. So in fact, I need it to be over four. So this is over four. So, okay. So let's see what happens at each one. First guy is the supremum. By subconvergence, so we just get F and K minus F. Uh, this guy is a continuity. So continuity of F, uh, you get epsilon not over four. Uh, again, continuity of F. And uh, again, uh, soup. All right, so now let's put them together. And yeah, and then this guy, we controlled it. Uh, <clears throat> it was um, epsilon over four. So all together, uh, we get epsilon over two. So the usual um, contradiction. Okay, I mean, this is a long proof, so please tell me if you have questions. I mean, I don't want to jump to new stuff unless uh, there's some questions here. So, should I 
I will start going the proof again, and then you can ask questions in the chat. Um, so we're proving Arzela Scully, and we're doing the easy direction. Relatively easy. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, so you assume F is compact, and we want to prove closed and bounded and um, echo continuous. Uh, closed and bounded, you can see the hind borel proof. Uh, it's identical. Uh, okay, that's fine. Now, yeah, suppose um, F is not echo continuous. So as we said in the previous um, theorem, um, it means that there is some uh, equivalent sequences. Um, so that their images are not equivalent. Okay. Um, good. Now we use our topology. Um, compactness of K gives us uh, subsequences, converging subsequences. Uh, equivalence tells us that the limits are actually equal. Any questions? No questions. Um, compactness of F tells you that, you know, Fn has a converging subsequence. Um, you know, this is inside Fn, which is inside F. Okay, and then, uh, fine. So, don't have echo continuity, but uh, the trick here is to use the continuity of F. So let me write on the side. Um, uh, this is a replacement. Of uh, point wise echo continuity. Okay, so I mean, I mean this step, this step. Okay, I think that's clear. And then, um, yeah, we use the subconvergence and the, the continuity. Is that okay? Any questions? Can I get some likes? No likes. Okay, two likes. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Five people like it. Who knew that uh, human communication <laughs> will end up uh, being like this? This is amazing. <laughs> uh, Okay, good. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on. Um, all right. Now let's do um. So we have to build. Uh, we're building towards the converse. Um, the converse direction in um, Arzela Ascoli in AA. <clears throat> so in the book, they introduce a new concept for this. It's called totally bounded. <clears throat> so uh, a set um, <clears throat> K in Rn uh, is called um, totally bounded totally bounded uh, if what if um, 
if for every epsilon positive, um, how do I say it? Uh, if for every epsilon positive, you can find the um, a set S epsilon in K. I will draw some pictures because the definition is a bit abstract. Um, uh, there exists uh, S epsilon in K. Um, so that uh, what? So that K is inside the union of, um, yeah, I have to draw some pictures. So, so okay, if for every epsilon, you can find some subset of K so that when you draw balls around that set, the K is in it. And, um, and more, more importantly, this set S has finite cardinality. Um, okay, so let me draw some pictures. This is too abstract. So, do an example. Uh, what's a good example? Uh, let's take, uh, yeah, let's just take any compact. Let's just take zero one. Take a K to be zero one. And then, the question is, um, I want to find, uh, okay, so this is the set. And and just as an example, take epsilon to be, uh, uh, let me take it to be one over four. But we have to do it for every epsilon. I just, anyhow. Um, so I need to give you a subset. So want to find, S epsilon in K um, so that, you know, it will be some set like this so that when I draw balls around it, and one more, um, you know, um, such that zero one will be inside, you know, that, uh, that union. Uh, of this. Okay, so um, I think you can find this. Uh, so let me give you one, but there's many. Uh, just take, uh, uh, let me see. So I take zero, then let me put one at uh, one over four, one half, um, three-fourths, and one. Okay. I mean, I, I took too many, but anyways. Um, so you have zero, one over four, one half, three-fourths, one. And then you draw balls around it. Uh, so this is B epsilon zero. It actually hits. Um, so that's one guy. Second guy, B epsilon one over four. Third guy, I don't like, the picture is too confusing. Let me draw a few of, less of them because it's too confusing. So that's the B epsilon zero. And you know, this is like the other guy, B epsilon one, right? And uh, this is the, uh, yeah, actually, I didn't need. No, but the ball might be open. Yeah, it's good that I included all of them. And then uh, you know, you have. Uh, actually, never mind. Fine. So, okay, fine. Um. Now next one. Take a, uh, take epsilon. Uh. Now what about uh. You know. Epsilon uh, to be uh, something else like one over eight or epsilon one over uh, sixteen. I don't know. Um, so 
Um, so let's do a general one. Um, yeah, let me say like this. Do I have time? Yeah, I have time. Oh, um, means uh, size. So S epsilon less than infinity means size or number. Can we use definition theorem of cover? Uh, well, K might not be compact. So oh, for the example, yes, you can use the finite sub cover. That's right. Um, OK, so here we mean like cardinality. Cardinality. Like, you know, like S epsilon is like X, um, A1, da, 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 A, S epsilon. Um, actually, I think I can do this for general epsilon. Let me give you the proof um, just to, uh, to motivate. Do I have time? I don't have time. Um, anyways, yeah, I will leave it to you. So for general epsilon, um, uh, use, um, use N, um, take, uh, take N large enough. such that you have this. And uh, so I, I leave the details to you, but it's not too hard. And take S epsilon to be uh, the dyadics, you know. Um, um, okay, fine. All right, so what do I have to prove? Yeah, let me make sure I prove you this theorem and then we do more examples. If the balls are open, then one over four is not in the union. So I, I, again, right? I didn't draw all of them because there's too many. Uh, it will be hard to see. So I have one guy, second guy, third guy, but then you also have, okay, let me draw it. It's just the picture gets messy. So you have a ball at one over four, and you have a ball at three over four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just the picture is too messy. Right. So let's see. Let's prove it. Um, so we did it for zero, one, but the proof is uh, pretty similar. So let K be bounded, so not necessarily compact. So finite cover is not immediate. Uh, so let K be a bounded, uh, uh, let K in R, in R, let me just do R, uh, be a bounded set. Uh, then in fact, um, K is totally bounded. Okay. Um, I mean, okay, let me draw a picture. Yeah, let me draw a picture. So if, if this is K, it says that, uh, and you give me, and you fix epsilon, some small epsilon, it says that you can find finitely many disks that uh, cover it finitely many uh, epsilon disks that uh, that cover um, that cover K All right okay so. So uh, proof. 
um, since um, since k is bounded, uh, there exist um, there exists um, uh, large enough um, m. Uh, actually, let me call it R, radius, um, uh, such that K is inside uh, the ball, um, you know, center at, um, yeah, for some, there's, uh, so there exists large enough R uh, at, at some fixed uh, X naught in, uh, in K. So the picture is, uh, uh, this is k. You fix some x naught, and then you know you take a large ball that uh, fully contains it. Okay. All right. Um, fine. Actually, I changed my mind. Um, I want to take it to be a um, a cube. I will explain why. Um, CR so there exists a box. Um, so um, this is um, X in RN. If we yeah, let me do in RN, it's fine. So that um, you know um, X minus, let me write like this, maximum X not I. This is terrible. I should change notation. That is less than R. So you fix X not and the distance Qx naught is um, i. Let me do a. Let me just draw four examples. So this is x naught, and then yeah. So so do it like this. Like that, okay. So this is the box centered at uh, at x naught. So why why look at a box? Um, why look at the box? Uh, Cr uh, because uh, we will use the same dyadic proof. Same dyadic um, proof as in zero one. Is that okay? So first, um, okay. What are we doing here? So we want to show K is totally bounded. We said there is a box big enough so that K is inside it. That's clear. Um, claim. Two claims. First claim, um, CR is totally bounded. Uh, implication, and then second claim, claim two, in fact, uh, K this implies that K is totally bounded. Because the book proof is a bit confusing, let me give you a, a short argument for these claims. So, yeah, let me do claim two first. 
and then we'll do claim one today and Thursday. OK, so. Um, since um, CR is uh, totally bounded. Uh, consider. S uh, epsilon K to be the following set. Uh, how do I say it? Yeah, take all the X in S epsilon uh, for a CR, uh, where the, the ball center at X, the ball center at X of epsilon intersects uh, K. Okay, so let me draw what, what, what does that mean? So if we get claim one, then uh, you have some epsilon net, which will be dyadics. And uh, this is set K. And, uh, you know, you have the, your epsilon bolts around each dyadic. And then uh, S epsilon only keeps the, uh, the guys that uh, intersect the set. Okay. So, so this guy, this guy, this guy, all right? So only keep um, uh, elements of um, S epsilon uh, CR that uh, whose ball intersects K. And that's it really. I mean, there's nothing more to say. Uh, uh, then uh, you just take S epsilon of um, CR to just be, um, how, do you, how do they say it? So, okay, so since, um, you know, for, um, for X in S tilde, Uh, there exists X in the intersection uh, of these two. So uh, they call it X hat. Um, so that's true. So then just let, uh, so just let S epsilon for K to just be um, X hat, um, <clears throat> you know, this X hat guys. Uh, in other words, uh, you have to use as the center of the disk, um, you know, the you call it the thing that's inside case because they do this in the book because you might have the following situation you might have uh, this is k and uh, the center is outside but the ball intersects well you cannot use this as the center so what they do is well okay so find x hat let me make it bigger Find the uh, x hat, and then, and then, um, you know, uh, draw a ball uh, around it like that. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, we run out of time. But uh, yeah, next on Thursday I will do claim two. So claim two on Thursday. Claim one. We're done for you. I'll uh, I'll stick around. Yeah, 
Thanks, Tiko. I have a question. I can see it. I have a question from last week uh, for a sequence a n equal to n. When n is even and when n is odd, what can we say about its limit? Is the limit infinity when n is even and when what? I'm not sure what you mean. I think you mean. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. You're probably talking about something like this. Or maybe like this or yeah, I don't know what. Which one? OK, so. Yeah, so this guy. Um, I mean, you can draw it. Yeah, I don't have to tell you. Um, so when n is even, you know, um, where is it? Two, four, six, goes up, 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 and then three, five, um, goes down. So these guys go to plus infinity, and these guys goes to minus infinity. So D and E, limit doesn't exist. I came a bit late uh, for the first example. Why is one X discontinuous? Why it does not have convergent subsequence? Let's see, where is it? I don't remember where was it. I think you mean this guy. Yeah. So. I mean, what is this? I mean, you can see it, right? Uh, it goes from minus one to one. Here is zero, here is one. And uh, at x equals zero, it jumps. And uh, this is in your practice problem. So in your practice problem, you prove that, uh, uh, you prove that the soup norm is bigger than a half. I mean, there's many things, so let me. OK, so your question is why? Why uh, no convergent subsequence? Well, if it did, so if if there exists F and K going to F. Uh, uh, where now F is uh, this pointwise guy. This uh, indicator, then we get contradiction. Um, we get contradiction because um, f and k, f in general, if something goes to uniformly and these guys are continuous, we get uh, f is continuous. But this guy is discontinuous. And we'll
it's quite complicated. Why do we say that f is closed when the limit of f and f is not in CK? Good. Again, so where is it? Here. Um, you have to be careful. Uh, by closed, we don't mean Pointwise closed, we mean closed in in the supernorm. Um, um, so we mean pointwise in the supernorm. Uh, like we don't uh, we don't have. Um, let me write it here, up here. So. It's kind of messy. Let me fix this. Um, uh, so in fact, um, so this is not, this cannot be upgraded. To uh, FN. Uh, uniformly, uh, because uh, uniform limit of continuous is continuous. Is that okay, is it? So we don't have that this guy converts to anything. In, in the soup norm. Uh, so, and by closed, we don't mean that these guys are closed. Uh, so let me, uh, we said that the unit pole is closed. This guy is closed. The closed unit pole. This guy is closed. Is it? Is that okay? Does compactness of F always implies that there exists a unit? Yes, yes, exactly. So that's what we're proving. Uh, we are proving um, exactly that uh, we're proving compactness in the um, in the supernorm. You got it, exactly. Sang Wu, is that okay? Yes, because we use the exact. 